way the central planners want you to believe, it's all just easy. You don't earn it. There's no, you don't, you, the success just kind of happens. It happens because of the community at large. What I know for a fact is, success is earned. And the thousands, in fact millions of people that pursue their dreams create opportunities for many more people. It creates rising income for people. It lessens the demands on government. And having that practical experience, I think, is something that is missing in Washington, D.C. these days. Under the Obama administration, you can count on a single hand the number of people that actually have practical business experience. They considered a conflict when they put people in positions of where the regulations take place. It's a conflict if you actually have subject matter expertise. The next president of the United States is going to have to reverse this trend of political hacks and academics through executive orders and through hyper-regulation trying to change our country. It is to restore a proper balance of government that you bring men and women that have business experience so that we can create the field of dreams again, where there's more prosperity for more people and less demands on government. In D.C., under this administration, President Obama has raised taxes by a trillion dollars to fund Obamacare and another $600 billion over 10 years because he could. When I was governor, we cut taxes totaling $19 billion. And like Tennessee, we don't have an income tax. We had to recharge to, fi to find the taxes to cut. In Washington, President Obama has almost doubled the national debt, totaling $18 trillion. And Washington, our national government, lost its AAA bond rating status, the first time in American history. Under Obama, we've seen the weakest, most tepid economic recovery in modern history. On average, our growth now, the growth rate is 2%. It is the worst since, since the post-World War II era started. 40% of the 8.5 million people that are unemployed have given up looking for work altogether. We have the lowest workforce participation rates we've had in 35 years. Poverty is up in spite of the fact that we've increased transfer payments to record levels. There are five million more people that are stuck in poverty with this, with this recovery that is so tepid. And median household income is down by $2,100. That's pitiful. In Florida, we grew, during my tenure as governor, the economy grew by 4.4% per year. And we created 1.3 million net new jobs. More than any state in the country other than California, a state that is almost three times our size. And guess what? Jobs were created, but so was household income. It went up by over $1,000 in real terms during my time. We applied conservative principles across the board, and I tire of hearing people say that you can't do it in Washington, D.C. Of course you can. You need principle-centered leadership. You need a Congress that will support the efforts, and working together, we can restore America's greatness by reforming the big things that need to be fixed. Using conservative principles, we can create rising income for the middle class, and we can lift people out of poverty again. I know it because I saw how it was done in Florida. Law after law was changed by conservative principles, not just in economic policy, but in other areas as well. I'm proud of the fact that I got an A-plus rating from the NRA every year I was governor because we made Florida safe and we protected the Second Amendment like nobody's business. We took on the trial bar and we won. We took on the public unions and the teachers unions and we won. We were focused on improving the, the, the climate for teachers, but the unions themselves resisted all the changes, but we were successful. Our workers' comp system was the second most expensive in the country, and we, we dealt with workers' comp fraud, and small businesses received a $400 million benefit by going from the second highest premium cost in the country to down to, to one of the lowest. We enhanced the right to, right to life in our state, protecting life from the beginning to the end. And we put the most vulnerable in our society at the front of the line. That is a conservative value in my mind. Those that truly need the help of government should be front and center, first and foremost. And that's what we did in Florida, and Florida was a lot better off because of that.